What's going on, y'all? My name is Cody. If you don't know me, uh, it'd be much appreciated if you would uh, subscribe or follow. I think that this is going to be a really big blessing to you with everything we're about to go over. But anyways, today I want to talk about uh, a topic that I think is really important for Christians to consider. It's just going to be kind of a testimony for my life, but I think it's going to be really relevant to you as well. Um, you know, in, in the past, uh, you know, maybe a month or two of my life, I felt like... Uh, I don't want to say my spiritual walk has been stagnant, but I've really felt like there's been something missing and it's been more spiritually hazy than anything else. And I am the last experienced, feely, touchy, warm sensation from God person you'll ever meet. But with that being said, I believe that God touches us and marks us. And we've had a moment at the point of salvation where like God was so revealed to us in a way that we never had him revealed to us before. And I, I, I see that biblically and I don't believe that that's just a salvation experience. I believe that, that can be a lifestyle lived as a believer. And if we're not experiencing it, that's not God's fault. That's ours. And I was just praying, spending some time on my knees. And um, in the midst of me praying, I was just crying out to God and being like, God, I, you know, I want to look more like you. I want to sacrifice more for you. I want to love more like you. I want to be more uh, you know, loving, joyful, peaceful patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, self-controlled, like all of these things. I just want to live by the spirit and not carry out the desires of the flesh. I'm just praying all these things out and just asking God, like, what is it? What am I missing right now? What, what do I need to change? What do I need to do differently? And I just really felt my heart was one of those moments when I just thought to myself, when's the last time in public, in the normal everyday life, you even thought about me and it rocked me. It was one of those things where I was like, ouch. You know, I, I think for me, it was one of those things where it's like, um, I'm very big on speed and things, uh, grew spiritually very quickly, um, read a high quantity, retained a high quantity, started acting on a high quantity. I have my own business. I started it quickly try to grow it as fast as possible, um, scale up fast as possible, I want to sell it fast as possible. All these things, everything's about speed, 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 speed. And one of the things that happens is when you have speed, and it's specifically on the business side of the things, but even in the spiritual as well, me trying to have other people help me with those things tends to become very difficult because I find that I am more urgent to do things for my own life than other people are, right? I'm more urgent to grow spiritually more than other people are. So if dude's not going to wait for a read or do a Bible study with me, I'm going to find 30 sermons online that'll teach me because he's going to, you know, give me, he's going to tell me he needs a month to figure it out. Like I'm just that way. I'm going to read 30 books about it, you know, watch 30 sermons about it and get all this information. And, you know, one for a job thing. If I knew that guy's going to take 30 minutes, I'll just do it immediately. Cause I know I can just get it done right now and get it out of the way. It's not cause I think I'm better than other people. It's not a proud thing. It's not like a Oh, well, I don't trust other people because I do it better than everybody else around. It's nothing about that. It's just a speed thing. I like things done quickly. Um, I mean, Jesus' ministry, actually, his ministry was done quickly. Like, he spent time resting, obviously, but he did everything quickly. And in my own life, I really had to evaluate and say, you know what? I think in the midst of me having a good heart and desire to do things quickly and to speed through things to look most like Jesus as I possibly can... I ended up relying too much of myself on that as well and saying, I'm going to make this decision right now because it logically makes sense. I, I'm comfortable with the decision. It, it biblically lines up. But what I stopped doing in that process, and it was just a tiny little in the wrong direction, was I stopped considering doing it with God, um, but rather just doing it myself because of this kind of subconscious, I'm going to be slowed down with other people's consulting um, in the middle of whatever I'm, I'm trying to do here. So from that, obviously leaving Holy Spirit out is the worst decision ever because I'm really good at doing one thing. Actually, I don't know if there's anyone better at doing this than me and that's messing things up. I mess things up really good. I, I'm an expert. I've been practicing for 23 years now. And Jesus is really good at, at mending things, perfecting things, putting things together. Uh, and, and, and I recognize, you know, wow, in my life, in my, my spiritual walk right now, um, I am really not leaning on the Lord 
but rather leaning on my own understanding and my own view or beliefs of how something should go in the moment because I know that it's not going to turn into chaos. And that's true. Again, I'm doing everything biblically. It's not like I turned to prostitution and selling drugs out my back door. But God wants to be a part of your life. He wants to be physically in your everyday life. Like Holy Spirit lives in you and he wants to live out through you. And if you're so busy on your stuff, your agenda, your, it turns into this self-centered thing versus a self-giving thing. And I found that I was so just about my business and, and you know, making sure that my family is taken care of and all, all the stuff that's good and on the surface is not bad things and making sure that these friends are, are you know, enjoying my, my time and I'm being intentional with them and making sure that I'm doing, you know, this kind of ministry thing and I'm making sure that I'm spending enough time with my son and, and you know, trying to spend enough time with my parents and, like, and, and her parent, my wife's parents. And, like, it's just, like, all this stuff and, like, delegating that, like, it took the Holy Spirit right out of a lot of things. And it's, like... God has had almost no say in my life in the day to day because I've been so busy trying to do this stuff all myself in regards to making sure that everything was categorized and and compartmentalized correctly. And now I'm looking back going, well, what happened over this past month? Like I made these decisions. I went to the store for me. I, 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 I was doing my, my, my business stuff for me. It's like, and yes, I was giving in the midst of it and all that still, but like it, it was just one of those things where my heart posture turned from God, what do you want in this circumstance to, I know what's going to bring fine results in this circumstance and just leaving Holy Spirit on the sidelines for me to do it on myself. And what a sad place to be, you know, again, there was a rock bottom. There wasn't a crazy, Whoa, my gosh, everything's falling apart. You know, my business didn't break down. My marriage isn't on the, you know, brink of divorce or anything like that, but it's just not even close for any of those things either. But just one of those things where the Lord was just like, whoa, why can't I be with you in these things? Like, why do you have to do it alone? And it was like, wow, Lord, I am sorry. Like, it was just like one of those like slaps in the face. And it wasn't a mean, angry, it was just like a, a fatherly, like, I want to do it with you kind of thing. And I just want to encourage you all and say, hey, I don't know what you're doing, what you're going through in life, what you're carrying, what you're wrestling with, what you're succeeding in and winning in. But... God wants to be in that with you. And if you're not sensitive to hearing what he has to say, then it's going to be harder to hear what he has to say later and later and later and later. And you're going to get to the point where it's like, you have no idea what the Lord's saying at all. And because you're not listening. And then when he does speak, you don't even know the shepherd's voice because you haven't been spending the time with him that you should be to make sure that you're hearing these things the way that you should be. And then it's like, whoa, what, what in the world happened? It's like, I never want to be like that in my life or in a place like that in my life. And again, it wasn't, I don't want to make it come off as this over dramatized thing of like, you know, I'm spiritually suffocating and dying. And I feel like I'm not like, it's none of those things, but it's just one of those things. It's like, wow, I just, I just needed a correction in that and be like, no, I need to like pursue him even harder during the times in my life when I believe that things are going really, really well, because like, that's what's going to like. His seeing my stewardship of the little things is going to make him faithful in the bigger things. And mind you, that has nothing to do with finances. It can be relevant to finances. Um, if as long as it's relevant 100% first off to his will uh, and him being glorified. But it has nothing to do with finances. It has to do with stewardship of the life you've been given. And God wants to give you more to steward over. And I want to steward over as much as God has for me. But he is not just going to keep giving me when he knows that I'm going to irresponsibly be taking care of and stewarding what he has given me. I want to be a good manager and I want to show him that with my life every single day. And over the past month, it was not the best representation of that. And I proved with my actions. So correct me in it. There's grace for all those things. There's grace for you all and all those things. But I want to encourage you, make him part of those things. Keep him part of those things. He loves that. He wants to be part of those things. And you all in co-union, communion with each other is going to lead to um, crazy things happening in the kingdom as long as we're doing it with him and not on our own. So I appreciate you all. Again, please feel free to subscribe if this has been a benefit to you and bless you. I appreciate you all, and I will chat with you all in the next one. See you guys.